Well, Donald Trump certainly has a way with um, getting people a little riled up, shall we say. I mean, they still haven't recovered from this one. They asked me that question. One of the presidents of a big country stood up and said, well, sir, uh, if we don't pay and we're attacked by Russia, will you protect us? I said, you didn't pay? You're delinquent? He said, yes, let's say that happened. No, I would not protect you. In fact, I would encourage them to do whatever the hell they want. You got to pay. You got to pay your bills. <laughs> All right, so the left is going wild. Like now they really, really need to stop him. No matter what, Donald Trump must be stopped because gosh darn it, he's making friends with our enemies. The people that we have chosen to be our enemies, he's, he's going to upend the entire international order. Oh my goodness, what if, what if I told you that that international order was structured in a way to benefit, say, just a few? Well, then they'd probably call me a conspiracy theorist, but nonetheless, I got to share some information with you. Um, I, I, let me turn back to what's really happening here, because we have a $95 billion plan to make sure that Russia does not get its hands on Ukraine. And there are going to be people that benefit from that plan, including shareholders at some of the nation's largest military companies. And there are going to be politicians that benefit from that plan because you see lobbyists have been given a ton of money to go out and lobby these politicians. And certain politicians are going to get more money that's fed to their campaigns if certain things go through. And the president of the United States is now saying, look, you got to do this. You got to do this. You got to pass this thing, Congress. Mitt Romney told senators the other day, it was like the most important thing they'd ever do in their lives. I mean, talking about dramatic. Take a look at Mitt. The vote we will soon take to provide military weapons for Ukraine is the most important vote we will ever take as United States senators. Okay, tell that to Rand Paul. Rand Paul may also think it's important for different reasons, of course. Man, he went off. Listen. The title of this bill should say, Ukraine first, America last, because that's what this is really about. Now, bills in the legislature, bills that come before the Senate, don't have pictures or covers on them like a book would have or a magazine. But if this bill had an image or a cover on the front of the bill, the image would be the migrant in New York who assaulted a police officer, was freed from jail on no bail, and gave the middle finger of both hands to America. That's what this bill is. It's the middle finger to America. This wow. bill is the middle finger to So that's a pretty graphic image. We talked about that the other day. Like, I'm just anticipating the team's thumbnails on that one. It is a very graphic image. But Rand Paul driving it home that really, in his view, this was not good for America. This was good for Ukraine, but not good for America. Don't tell that to Nikki Haley. Oh, no. No, Nikki Haley who is just facing disgrace after disgrace, first Nevada, now South Carolina. Nikki Haley wants you to know that she's all in. I mean, she's the former ambassador to NATO, for goodness sakes. It's important for Joe Biden and Congress to tell the American people why they should care, to give them the other side. And you don't hear that. The other side is that NATO has been a 75 year success story. We have not had war in the region. And if you look, Russia has never invaded a NATO country. They've invaded Georgia. They've invaded Ukraine. They've invaded Moldova. So we want to make sure that, yes, do we want NATO to pay more? Of course we do. But the last thing we're going to do is side with a thug. Keep in mind, Putin kills his opponents. Keep in mind that he has arrested Evan Gersovich, who's been sitting in jail just for doing journalism. Keep in mind that this is a man who has wanted to destroy America and defeat America for years. I dealt with Russia every single day. It is a mistake for Trump to side with Putin over our allies. We needed a lot of friends after 9-11. We better remember that. But it takes a friend to, to get a friend. And that's all right, all right. So I'm going to stop her. And by the way, I don't dispute her point on the Wall Street Journal reporter. I don't dispute her point on how 
look, you know, when he needs to take care of someone, he's taking care of someone and, and not in a, a way that, that we would ever, ever condone. All that said, one, when we needed friends after 9-11, guess who was our friend? Yeah, it would be Russia because it was Putin who called Bush as that was all going down, W at the time, and was a very good friend to him at that point. And then the other thing I'd say is that you have to be, at some point, Nikki, can you not, as a human being, as a, hopefully an intelligent enough person, be asking why it is the way it is? In other words, why are we in this mess? Why did we have such a breakdown in diplomacy when you could have seen this one coming a zillion miles away? I mean, maybe the answer would be if you don't actually want people's lives on the line like this and so many you know, so much destruction, then maybe you should have done whatever you could to say, hey, Putin, don't worry about it. We're not really going right in on your border. And yet we didn't, right? Like we, we continued to encroach and he started getting scared in part because of the rhetoric coming out of Antony Blinken and Joe Biden as soon as they came into office. So the smart thing from a diplomacy standpoint would be to temper that rhetoric, not to be like, oh, we're big, mighty NATO but maybe to be a little bit more coy with it, maybe to actually play around with the semantics such as, dare I say, Donald Trump actually did. So he didn't have Putin terrified that he was gonna be invaded any day of the week.